Hello and welcome to the Care Team Podcast, where we're based on Romans 12 2, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. This is episode 33 on April 29th, uh, 2021. And today we have guest speaker Jeff Minton. He's yeah. with Eighth Street Pizza. We're going to be talking about uh, missions and outreach. And so, Jeff, tell us a little bit about your outreach that you do. Well, actually, uh, we came up with this idea when we were back at A Street. And as a business model, it's a horrible idea. So it's based <laughs> on a pay it forward um, type thing where people actually have paid ahead to help us help others. Mm-hmm. Um, and the beauty, beautiful thing about uh, New Albany is it's a, it's a really special place. And uh, we stay about four or $500 a head all the time. So if a family comes in, they can't afford to eat, then uh, we have an opportunity to, to bless them in that way. That's awesome. Uh, now, it, you know, try to get a bank to loan money or anything like that. <laughs> and then they just look at you like you are insane. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what we do. Uh, I'm, my background a little bit was I'm a retired Domino's Pizza franchisee. So that's where the pizza came from. And uh, it just has given us a real opportunity. And really, it's quadrupled our mission. Mm -hmm. And the fun thing about it is the charity owns the for-profit pizza shop. Mm -hmm. So it gets a a dividend each month and uh, helps us do the things that we do. And your all's pizza is really good. It It is really good. It is really good. It's amazing. We uh, And I'm not just saying that. No, it Uh, is. (laughs) uh, We were snotty about a couple things, coffee and pizza. So um, (laughs) the pizza, uh, you know, it holds up. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're happy with it. And what's the address again? I know it's right there on Spring, right? Yeah, it's four eleven East Spring Street. Okay, it's not on A Street anymore. But um, you know, one of the beautiful things is what we've learned throughout the ten years in Midtown is that the community relates to the name that they give you, and it's always been A Street. Mm-hmm. So when you know we moved, we just kept the name, and yeah. um, it's become a beautiful thing. It's I tell everyone this may not be appropriate, but it's like Margaritaville. It's a state of mind. So yeah. A Street Pizza. <laughs> you know, so anyway. Well, and, and yeah, so if you're in New Albany and you haven't had A Street Pizza, you need to check it out. Uh, even if you're not from New Albany, you need to travel to New Albany and go check it out. But yep. uh, we used to have it here for Celebrate Recovery. Uh, since COVID hit, we've had to kind of change our process a little bit. But once we get to the new normal, uh, it is our intention to bring back a street pizza. So, yeah. uh, but with any, um, with, with any care team podcast, we like to have what we call a soft start. And so for this soft start coming off of March madness, uh, we want to have a, a really short bracket. Uh, I was listening to the radio the other day and they were talking about school lunches and, you know, just a lot of memories kind of flooded back with that. And some things were good. Some things were horrible. I never want to see again. Uh, but we thought it'd be fun to have a bracket to, to have a vote to see what is the our recommended best traditional school lunch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be the referee. I'll be the the tiebreaker vote, and so uh, Lori and Jeff are gonna are gonna vote it out. So you got tater tots versus the square pizza. I will 100% vote for tater tots anytime, any place, no matter what. <laughs> I gotta go with pizza. <laughs> with pizza, okay. I mean, even though yeah. it may be sorry, bad. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it wasn't for that bread, I would go for the pizza too. But I'm gonna go with the tater tots. Oh. So, all right. Uh, you have the mashed potatoes, the one that has the perfectly scooped out it, and then it's got the yellow stuff in there. Which, I'm not really sure what the yellow stuff was. I'm, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna tell myself it was cheese, it's, but I heard one person call it snot gravy. Uh, That's so definitely got, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> But you got mashed potatoes with yellow something in it or the over well done hamburgers. I'm definitely going with the mashed potatoes and the yellow gravy like substance. Even with the yellow? Well, especially that's what makes it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And what was the other thing? The other thing was the hamburger. The overdone hamburger. I think I went mashed potatoes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So mashed potatoes wins over the over the hamburger. Let's take that one off all right now we have chicken patties versus corn dogs Mm, i think i'm gonna go with the chicken patty my 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 kids are um they have a preference for spicy chicken sandwiches at school nowadays so i'll go with that yeah and i'm going with corn dog corn dog okay all all day long I, i i'm gonna have to go with corn dog too i mean even i wasn't real crazy about the chicken patties and i have to peel the the stuff off the corn dog to eat it but that's really gross tommy (laughs) <laughs> it's better than a chicken patty. So <laughs> I don't know. And then the last thing would be uh, 
fruits and veggies, you know, like just something a la carte there or French fries. We did not have vegetables in our school lunch in the 70s. It didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't. So French fries. French fries? Yeah, I'm going for us. Fries, okay. Yeah. All right. I figured that would probably be a pretty easy one, but for me, like, you just never know, like, the ketchup, and that could be kind of weird, and so, anyways. All right. Tater tots versus mashed potatoes. Potato versus potato. Tater tots, 100%, yeah, all tots. the way. Tater tots, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I, I can see that. Sorry, potatoes, yellow stuff. You got to go. Yeah. All right. Corn dogs versus French fries. Hmm. I'm torn between food on a stick and just delicious <laughs> fried Goodness. Let's go with the food on a stick. Corn the dog. Food on the stick. Okay. All right. And I had corn dog. Corn dog. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Again, the, the the ketchup sometimes for me would just ruin the French fries. But I never right. did understand ketchup divas. All ketchup tastes the same to me. No. No. Sorry. We'll pray yeah. for you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All I, right. I disagree. <laughs> All right. Just because it's tomatoes doesn't mean it's ketchup. So, anyways, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> All right. Last one. For all all the glory, tater tots versus corn dogs. Tater tots, yeah, tots. always. Tater tots, it is. Yep. All right. Well, there you have it. If you're listening in, uh, and your son or daughter is asking you about uh, school foods or if you need to pack something, tater tots wins. So, uh, so yeah, I appreciate you guys being uh, uh, good sports on that. And uh, but as we dive in today, uh, we want to talk about outreach and we want to talk about. Uh, serving and serving on mission. And Jeff, I, I know you really uh, talked a lot about your background, but um, as we as we as we dive in, though, we want to uh, we want to surround uh, everything we talk about with prayer and with scripture. And so there was a, uh, some scripture just kind of came to my mind uh, as I was prepping for this, and it's Proverbs nineteen seventeen: Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and He will repay him for his deed. And so uh, I just want to hear about your heart, your theology, you know, and uh, just. Uh, your heart for this mission? Well, uh, honestly, it started 10, 11, 12 years ago. Uh, my dad passed away, and uh, as a tribute to him, um, we wanted to do a, a fundraiser. And so we uh, we raised 511 pairs of socks and $200 for the healing place in Louisville. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we didn't know, that God had other plans for us. And uh, and honestly, it has become a, a full-time mission for, for me. And um, so that leads to the pizza shop. And the beauty of it is, is like we have this uh, A Street Pizza, and it is a, a, a place uh, that folks can come, and uh, people have paid it forward uh, in order for, say, somebody, a family come in, and mm-hmm. they wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. Uh, they can actually get a, a meal, you know, with, with some dignity. Yeah. And, uh, and a like, good meal of that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah. delicious. It's, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, the, the beauty of it is, is like new Albany is this special place that, uh, uh, people have paid, paid it forward in order for others to do that. So we can serve others. Uh, so we stay four or $500 ahead all the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. That's so, awesome. So how does that work? If I come in and order pizza and I want to pay it forward, do I just say that? Is there yes. a specific way to do that? No. Nope. Um, the folks that come in, uh, our crew is really, really good at reading folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, you know, we're, we're good at asking questions that way. But for the most part, everybody knows that, you know, gosh, I only have this much money or can I pay it forward today? That kind of thing. Okay. So okay. Okay. That, so, awesome. yeah, it's, it's a cool thing. Awesome. Well, and uh, as far as like, uh, you know, I, I know you talked about Clean Socks Hope and, and A Street Pizza. So uh, for those people who are not familiar with Clean Socks Hope, can you can you help them uh, understand a little bit about how that, I mean, we talked about how it came about and then uh, how, your, how your mission uh, operates today. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is, is uh, the, the nonprofit owns the for-profit pizza shop. Yeah. And that gives my accountants and attorneys headaches every day. <laughs> um, but we really wanted it to be that way. So mm-hmm. really, uh, the pizza shop helps fund the mission uh, of the ministry. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that wasn't my idea. That's, uh, you know, if you guys are, and I know you are, mm-hmm. familiar with business's mission or, mm-hmm. or whatever, it can be uh, something like that. Um, and so we wanted it to, to be this beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And um, so the ministry itself has been around. We've been in Midtown. This is our 10th year. And um, basically we started out uh, just doing what everybody else did, you know, going in, uh, trying to help the homeless, help the, help mm-hmm. the folks, folks in there. And then we realized early on um, that 
uh, what we were doing was we, it felt wrong. Uh, it felt like we were doing more damage than, than, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good. Yeah. And so that really troubled me. And, and I came across this book by Bob Lupton called toxic charity mm -hmm. and, uh, an invite from Northside, uh, Brian Combs at the time, uh, was down at, uh, the old Northside on Oak. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he invited me to go to Atlanta to study under Bob Lupton for a weekend. That's awesome. And, uh, we saw what they did. And the mm -hmm. cool thing about new Albany is if you look at Atlanta and you're looking at new Albany, uh, it is the demographics are almost the same mm -hmm. uh, with the race component being the only thing that's different. Yeah. Um, but we could do it on a small scale. And so we immediately uh, started our Christmas store and then we started the food cooperative, which is a mm -hmm. low income food cooperative, which is a step up from um, food pantry. Mm -hmm. And so we started with that and uh, that's grown into the pizza shop as the third part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's been a, tremendous i mean for a grassroots very small nonprofit, it has uh you know the metrics on it just blows you away mm -hmm. uh we're a dare to care partner uh feeding america partner and um so we have done uh, not we god has done through our you know our work um amazing things in this little community yeah well and uh what you know, as, as we think about, you know, our partnership, because we, we want to uh, we want to partner with 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 mission partners in, in locally and and uh, and, and beyond. And I, I know this is not the outreach uh, side, you know, that we you know, we operate in the care department. But how, how can we partner with you guys or how, what, what are some things that and maybe it's not even just us. Maybe it's like others. How, how, how can um, how can folks get involved? How can people uh, plug in? How are what are some things we can do to support? Obviously. Well, you honestly, the easiest way is just go to our website and yeah. see see what's going on. Okay. Uh, when we have something specific going on, like the Christmas store, or mm -hmm. if you want to, uh, if you know someone that would be a good candidate for the, you know, the food co-op. Yeah. Uh, it just go there and, and either send an email or there's a way to, you know, fill out that information on on the website, and it's just cleansockshope.org. org. Okay. Um, but uh, that's the easiest way, mm -hmm. or call me. You know, I, I get tickled a lot of times. People will say, I've been trying to get a hold of you all week, and I'm like, well, you really weren't trying very hard because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my number is everywhere. So yeah. like, it's yeah. like, you know, so kiddingly, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to do it. Now, the cool thing is we have folks like uh, recently – Yum Brands reached out to us, mm -hmm. and they said, hey, man, we love what you're doing. We want to partner with you. Yeah. What can we do? And they uh, are huge. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> and um, so it was it was a fun thing because uh, it was um, – sort of a subset of the of the larger young group mm -hmm. uh they're they have a volunteer i don't know what they call it i should know that but i don't um anyway and it, it was all ladies and and they just had this heart for doing mission you know in in an urban area and so they um have been um uh, interested in partner with it, with us and uh so right now we're looking at potentially doing a uh two-week um I don't know what you call it. It's like a crash course going into the next school year um, here in the neighborhood uh, that will help the folks that don't have access to computers, that won't, don't have, you know, the, the underserved community that doesn't have Wi-Fi, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, and so we've got, we've rallied a, a bunch of folks like, like them, uh, teachers, everyone we could think of. And uh, that's not absolute yet, but we're working towards that being a, uh, sort of a, uh, a refresher as the kids go back to school in person back to school. Yeah. So um, it's just stuff like that. And, you know, um, I was telling you sort of off um, when we were setting up, it's like, you know, we've got this, this tremendous, we've had this tremendous like opportunity in sort of big picture stuff. Yeah. And I really felt that God was um, sort of leading us towards becoming small so we could do big things. That was really mm -hmm. what's been on my heart. And, and I think by just sort of, you know, having the two or three things that we're doing right now, that's allowed us, we've quadrupled our imprint in mm -hmm. Midtown just by opening the pizza shop in August, on August 1st. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that's where God's leading us. We can do, we've raised $500 uh, for scholarships for a, a different church mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. I think that's really where we're going mm -hmm. next. Uh, on top of the day-to-day -day stuff, you know, it just, helping folks that need help on Wednesday yeah. or something. 
Well, and you guys are in a great spot too. Yeah, I mean, right there. Uh, what is Breakwater? Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. At the Breakwater, it's four eleven yeah. East Spring. Yeah, and uh, so heavy traffic area. Oh yeah, yeah. And with the bridge being closed, that's going to be like it's mm-hmm. going to be like the interstate. You know, Sherman Minton's going to yeah. close. I think in June. Um, oh man, yeah. So they're, they're, for they're two not years, bringing tolls are they? I hope they're not. I I don't know <laughs> how that's going to work, uh, but uh, you know that's going to be like the main thoroughfare between New Albany, Clarksville, and Jeff. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate that for us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's going to really be bad. We're going to have to hire people. So if you're looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, one one thing that we, uh, you know, in, in care ministry, you know, we, we routinely say that there's no conversation that we have that's, uh, we, we rarely have light conversations. We often yeah. have really tough conversations. Yeah. And, and part of those tough conversations, too, uh, you know, is when we think about, you know, uh, our, our, our nature is to be a consumer is to go someplace and to, and to consume and to not think about uh, serving others. And so oftentimes, you know, we, we, we try to have those conversations about, okay, right now, you know, maybe, maybe you're in a season where you seem to be consuming, but maybe God is, you know, well, we, we know he is, but, but, but how is God uh, pressing on your heart for your calling, you know, to, to go out and to serve others. And so, yeah. uh, well, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah. You know, if we had like a five-hour podcast, we yeah. might be able to <laughs> like touch some of those. You know, I didn't see Jesus spending a lot of time, you know, in church, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm not saying that he wasn't there, but yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, you know, uh, he was out there. Uh, and it's funny, I just read the scripture this morning, and it talked about him being the, uh, you know, with sinners and, and, and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So I, I think the best thing that we can do as believers um, and maybe it's like the pizza shop, it's under the guise of something else, you know, mm-hmm. but is to offer, like sit down with someone have a cup of coffee or have a slice yeah. and just tell me your story. Yeah. Um, I'm an expert on me, you mm-hmm. know, and everybody else is also. Yeah. Uh, so if we can sort of break through those, those things, because when we went into Midtown mm-hmm. and any of the guys that were in the original North side on Oak and, and Midtown common stuff, mm-hmm. uh, they'll tell you, you know, when we first started this idea of what we were doing down there, I mean, we didn't see anybody for like 18 months and it was like, we had volunteers come and go that never saw another soul besides us. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, credit to North side for actually staying with us. Um, but, that's what has to be done, you know, before we sort of broke that plane of existence. But if you can, if you can just, you know, be a friend to someone, uh, that gives you an opportunity to share the gospel and, yeah. and it gets done every day a yep. lot of times. Well, I mean, and, and Jesus, he, he said a lot about, he talked a lot about, uh, giving to others and serving the needy. Absolutely. You know, uh, I'm, I'm reminded here in Matthew five forty two, uh, give to the one who begs from you. And do not refuse uh, the one who would borrow from you. Yeah. And then even uh, in uh, Mark ten forty five, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so, you know, we are called to serve. We are called to, uh, just as, as you were talking about, Jeff, to, to live on mission, to, to be out there and to serving others. Now, we all have different spiritual gifts, and, and, you know, we all don't have the same spiritual gifts, and we don't have the same promptings from God. But we all have promptings for God and we all have spiritual gifts. And so trying to match those things up and to go and to serve and to serve the poor and to serve the needy, to serve the people who are in dark places, uh, you know, is absolutely necessary. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I'll just throw this out there. You know, I think Shane Claiborne got it right. He, he, and I'm going to massacre this quote, but basically <laughs> the, the gist of it was, do you think Jesus actually meant the things he said? Mm-hmm. And so I find that really, really interesting and really, um, you know, it, it it bears on my heart that like he said the poor will always be with you. Yeah, you know, and so he didn't say that by mistake. Mm-hmm. I mean, that wasn't a, an accident that he said yeah. that. So I feel like that you know, and then if you look that up in the Greek, um, you know, basically it's those who have to beg. I mean, that's yeah. really what it, what, it, what it's talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I you know I feel like that you know any believer's calling is is a lot of times in the community they live. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, whatever that looks like, whether it's a home life group or maybe it's just a, a neighborhood group or whatever it is, you know, maybe it's the widow. What, you know, who knows what, what it is. For us, it has been this sort of beautiful um, experience uh, down in, you know, the midtown part of New Albany. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we have met 
some of the most incredible people that we've ever met. We were talking about Backpack Leah, yeah, uh, you know, a while back, and yeah. it's just you know these are great characters that God has given us the opportunity not only to share with, but to to be a part of their lives. Oh yeah, to pour into yeah. their lives and yeah. to to pray and over them and them. us. Oh, 100 percent. You know, yeah. I mean, it's. It's, um, you know, there, there's not a mistake there. Jesus, again, mm-hmm. he didn't say that by accident, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, well I, one of my favorite things, uh, uh, I, Jeff and I first met, um, I don't know how many years ago, at uh, the downtown campus. And uh, uh, I remember one of the things I saw was that there was a shower there. And I thought that was, like, the coolest thing because it just kind of it gave people an opportunity to, to get cleaned up in a very dignified way. Uh, it was just say, hey, is there a shower open? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there is one. Or, hey, we've got some land right now. Just give them a few minutes. And, I mean, just like just seeing the look on their face, uh, the thankfulness, the gratefulness. I mean, like th- just just small things like that. And I, I know I joke a lot, you know, being uh, out of the Army now uh, that, you know, just getting a shower every day is a huge blessing. You know, so just trying to think about how we can serve people in real tangible ways. And they're just wonderful people. I mean, they're just uh, you know, they, they, they are, uh, they are created in God's image and it's in, we're called to, to serve them. Yeah. So. And, and that's kind of where that was sort of the gist behind the idea of a clean pair of socks. Yeah. You know, any of us that has ever, you know, got up and put on a clean pair of socks an amazing. Thing, <sighs> yes. You right. know, uh, and then you throw a shower in there and, and, you know, you're cooking with gas. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's yeah. the truth, you know, yeah. it's, it's the smallest things. And of course mm-hmm. that, uh, the idea of the socks came from a four year old, um, you know, doing the, doing that, and uh, she graciously allowed us to replicate that. That is really cool. Yeah. I, I never knew that. that yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I, I know you talked a little about your influences. Uh, you know, can you can you unpack that just a little bit about as far as like uh, key influences? I know we were talking a little bit earlier about Hugh Halter. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so. Yeah, I first of all, I got to start with my dad. Let me tell you a quick little story about that. He was this amazing guy that only had like one. Um, semester of college but he was he was the most well-read um stuff and a huge influence in my life and so Mm -hmm. about three weeks after he passed my mom I was there and we were kind of going through you know when people pass you know you go through all the stuff you know all the details you have to have and um there was a phone call and I happened to be there and my mom I knew something was up you know and uh she was just dumbfounded and so I said what was that all about and she said that there was a a a mission down in Appalachia and dad was a picker when he retired, he retired early from mm-hmm. DuPont. Uh, and he was a picker before that was even a word. Mm-hmm. And he would, he would do that all year long and then he would sell everything. And then he would go, he would then purchase stuff and go down to one of the missions in Appalachia. And he mm-hmm. would literally fill their needs list. That now we awesome. knew he was oh, going wow. down there. But he, it was just all, we always just thought he was going to the flea market or something, you know, because mm-hmm. he loved driving and traveling and meeting people. And yeah. for him, it was the, the sort of the art of the deal that was mm-hmm. his, this, that was his love. Yeah. But that's what he was doing. And so when we found that out, that led to, to that. That's awesome. So fast that's forward really cool. back to, yeah, it was, it's a great story. And uh, um, I got to share that a couple of weeks ago. And um, so that was, that was the reason, you know, that, that touched my heart in ways that, you know, you can't communicate. Sure. Um, and then uh, really, you know, as Brian and, and a few of those guys down um, down at Midtown or Northside on Oak in those days, and uh, we sort of read, started reading books and stuff together. And then we got the chance to, to not only meet those guys, but uh, these these guys started to influence us in ways. And when we got back from Atlanta, we threw away everything we thought we knew about ministry, ministry and mission. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started doing this like, let's, let's – let's be dignified in how, how we approach this. Let's don't, uh, make them dependent upon us, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So we've had the chance to sit down with, you know, Bob Lupton and Alan Hirsch and Mm -hmm. Hugh Halter and, um, on and on and on Leroy Mm -hmm. Barber. I mean, and these guys are just, they're just doing it every day. A lot of them, many of them, all of them are huge authors in the missional movement, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's interesting about that. So they have all been influenced. Hugh specifically, he um, is close. So he's been done a couple things for us, and we've yeah. done a, a few of his things. But, you know, the idea of it is is just being present in the community. Wow, doesn't that sound familiar? You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Being present where you're at. And, you know, that's 
uh, that's what Flesh is about a lot in, in a lot of those books, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is the one book that I haven't read. I have read parts of it, but not all of it. Okay. <laughs> but I've, I've got all his books. <laughs> yeah. And of all things, that's the one I haven't yeah. re- read, you mm-hmm. know, cover to cover. But, uh, you know, so that was, they are huge influences in this idea of um, business's mission is certainly uh, in there. Um you know, it's 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 tough to pinpoint one, uh, but for me, probably Hugh because he uh, he's done it in multiple places. You know, mm-hmm. they, they were in Colorado for a while, and and he he'll say, you know, I'm the church guy, you know, I'm the pastor guy, but he doesn't ever do any of that stuff. You know, it's always <laughs> something else. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say that's where we're at on that. Awesome. Well, and and the one thing I I, I wanted to just you know uh, uh, unpack a little bit was just I, I love your comment about. Uh, loving people right where you are uh, in your local community. Uh, I, I know that, that Jill and I, we, we've tried a few things before in the past, and uh, one was at Midtown just trying to help out, and, and that was a wall we hit was we're like, we're, we're not going to get any deeper or further unless we live right here. And so and so we were just trying to we're trying to weigh that out, and uh, our current situation is we, we live on family land, so we can't, you know, we're, we're that, that, that's where we're going to be locked in at. Yeah. So. But uh, so we ended up stepping away, not not because we didn't love the ministry. It was just like, you know, to do this right, just like you said, to do it with dignity. It's yeah. like uh, we're going to have to move down there. Yeah. So. And I understand that. And I mean, for us, it's like we sort of morphed it a little bit and made made it where you live and or work. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, if you if you're familiar with the, you know, the, the three, whatever it is, the three spots or whatever, you know, the, yeah, you know, the um, work. Uh, home and church used to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, then that that's where that sort of comes from, and that's mm-hmm. all from the missional uh, groups. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we sort of morphed that to make it, uh, you know, where you may live and work mm-hmm. because really the church, and again, this is Big C Church. I'm not knocking a church. Um, but it's like I think the church has sort of slipped away from that. And, um you know, coffee shops or whatever has become that third place. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think for us, it was just like, okay, well, you know, we've got this great location Mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got built in clientele all around us. Yep. Uh, And I'm not talking about necessarily the, you know, the homeless population or or the underserved. I'm talking about the population, you know, at large. Yeah. So it's been this beautiful thing to be able to sit down, you know, and we all have problems, you know, one of our friends like threw this out one time and I thought this was a great idea. And, and if you're from Louisville, you get this, but you know, there's need in, in places like, I don't know, um, Lake forest, just like there is in Lake dreamland. Oh yeah. You know, like dreamland's a place that sort of, um, back ends into where I was, you know, brought up in Shively and mm-hmm. like Lake dreamland is a place where cops won't even go, mm. you know, they're armed and they won't even go in there. You know, yeah. that's how bad it is. Mm-hmm. Then like, forest is where patino and those guys live you know yeah so it's this idea of like it's just not in you know underserved impoverished neighborhoods where there's need it's Mm -hmm. everywhere yeah you know and the bible speaks clearly on that you know that we're you said it in the before you know i don't when we were talking it's like we're all broken oh yeah and uh you know how that manifests is just different yep um and so if if we can encourage folks to be the best that they can be you know, then that's a beautiful thing, especially if we, we throw the Jesus factor in there. Absolutely. Well, uh, Jeff, I, I, I want to give you the, the last final word, uh, but I wanted to also look over, uh, ask Lori if she had anything that uh, she wanted to bring up or anything that uh, maybe questions we haven't asked. And if, it, if you don't, I can always cut that out. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeff, I want to give you the last final <laughs> word, and uh, I just want to, you know, if there's, maybe there's a question I haven't asked, maybe there's a topic I haven't touched on, but I, j- I just want to give you an opportunity to, to, to help our listeners and to help the folks in the church and the people listening uh, to, to better understand, you know, how we, can, um, how we can become more Christ-like in the way that we serve. Well, I, f- I think, first of all, I don't know if I'm the one that you should ask that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever... To be honest, you know, I couldn't do this work without a great sort of infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately for the for the charity, I'm the face of it, so that's kind of bad. Uh, but, you know, I've got great people around me. Uh, my wife certainly has been, like, uh, in the back 
many, many, many years. And uh, so she has to get a lot of a lot of the credit um, on that. And, you know, there was a time when we sat down, you know, I've been praying many years about um, I, I just wanted to be able to work for God every day. That was my goal. And uh, so the, the old joke is, like, he answered that prayer. But what I should have been praying for was that prayer and a salary to go along with it. Because <laughs> that was the one thing that I, that I forgot about. But, you know, in, in all honesty, it's not going to work. Like, if you try to recreate what we do, it's not going to work. And that was the greatest mm -hmm. lesson that Bob Lepton said to us. Mm -hmm. And then he said it to me personally. I've had a chance to sit down with him and speak to him, you know. And he said, look, man, it's not going to work. What we do is not going to work for you, but something will, and you've mm -hmm. got to be ready to adapt to that. Yeah. So I don't know what your calling may be, but I do know that God and certainly Jesus has called us out. Yeah. You know, and so what that looks like is, well, you know, I don't know what it is you can do, but you need to be doing something. Yeah. You know, because going to church <laughs> like yeah. is a beautiful thing. Yeah. But that's. You know, I didn't like, again, I didn't see Jesus writing a lot of checks and I didn't see him going to church. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I'm not yeah. being hard on him. I mean, we are all products. Well, of, it's 100% uh, grace, 100% truth. You know? Uh, you know, I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, we, we are incredibly blessed on what we get to do. Now, with a pizza shop, it's become like hard work. Uh, <laughs> so now all of a sudden, you know, like I was doing that when I was 19 years old mm -hmm. and that was 45 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm not kidding you. If I start screaming, it's cause I've got leg cramps. Cause we, we had the third best week last week that we've ever had uh, since we've been there. Awesome. Praise God. I yeah. mean, it's just crazy, you know? Yeah. And when we started, it was like, okay, we, nobody knows us. We were only open 16 hours at the other joint, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was only it was like a half day, half day, and a full day. That was mm -hmm. it. And then we just decided during a pandemic in the hottest month of the year to open a restaurant. That's the dumbest <laughs> okay, thing anybody has ever done. <laughs> I'm not kidding yeah. you. You know, especially a pizza shop mm -hmm. because pizza is a, is a fall, winter, spring thing. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily a hot summer thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we decided to go that route, but God has blessed it and, and so I think it's the, you know, I think Martin Luther King said this, you know, it's, it's sort of stepping out into the darkness on the stairwell. You know, you don't mm -hmm. know where you're going, but, yeah. you know, you're doing it on faith. So that's that awesome. would be that would be my last word. We'll, we'll give it to somebody that actually knew what he was talking <laughs> about. No, no. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, you. You've been a huge blessing, Thanks. and uh, we, we love partnering with you. We love uh, being on mission with you. Um, but as, as we get ready to close it out, we just want to remind folks that uh, prayer is primary. That, that, that's the, yeah, that's the primary way that we want to uh, serve others. And so, uh, so let's pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much for today. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to come here and, to, and to, to, to meet and to gather freely in the name of Jesus, to, to publicly proclaim that Jesus is king. And, uh, God, I, just, uh, I thank you so much for, for Jeff and his heart and his ministry and, uh, and, and what he's doing to serve you and your kingdom. Uh, God, I just pray blessings over him, God. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's so cool to hear some, you know, the ways that you're working in and through him uh, currently and in the past, God. And I just pray that uh, that in everything he does, uh, that he just brings glory to you and that he lifts up the name of Jesus as high as we can. Uh, God, I just thank you again so much for for loving us and and blessing us already uh, in ways that we we don't even understand. We'll never even know. And uh, God, we just thank you for that. It's in Jesus' beautiful name, I pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, don't forget to join us every Thursday, uh, Thursday morning, 7 a.m. to catch this episode and others on Amazon Music, YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. And as always, you can catch us on mynorsa.com slash care for additional resources. Love you guys, and we'll catch you next week.